Hello and welcome to episode 6 of this season's Unemployed to Unstoppable. Quite a lot to cover this episode. We've got some transfers in for the future. We've got a couple going out. And we've got the excitement of the playoffs as well. Because as you can see, we finished 5th. We've got our first uh, playoff game against Alfreton. And if we get through, we play Gateshead in the semi-final. So stay tuned and we'll see if we can make a real cracker trying to get up. Uh, welcome back. So first we'll go through the new transfers that we've got. So some of the youth players have been released from Premier League clubs. So we've snapped up Stefan Bajcic, who's going to be one of our new centre-halves. A uh, huge amount of potential. Uh, I think they we haven't got this character point anymore. We had him in on trial. I believe he was in for League One um, standard. Again, we've got Brandon Cover as well. He's attacking midfielder, but potentially we're going to move him out onto the left-hand side, depending on... Um, how good his stats are for that position. Uh, more to that to come. Uh, and we've got Stan Mills coming in from Everton as a right winger. So, he, I mean, again, five-star rule and duty potential on the right-hand side. Again, looks like a, a fantastic player. It's huge scouting summary. So, again, yeah, brilliant. And and the switch to the left-hand wing for Brandon Covers potentially because Jack Mackay wouldn't sign a new contract. He's decided he's going to go and join Queen's Park and abandon the wonderful journey that we have with Curzon Ashton. So, sad to say Jack McKay will be going. Played a lot of game for us this season, scored a lot of goals. Uh, so, yeah, unfortunate, but that is the way the cookie crumbles at times. In terms of league form then, a bit of a mixed bag, really. Lots of draws, not too many defeats. Um, but, yeah, not, not too many wins either. A bit of a, a kind of middle-of-the-road set of games, but it was enough to get enough points to the end of the season and secure us a place in the playoffs. Um, so with that being said, what we'll do is we'll click through and we'll get to the first match, which will be against Alfreton. So stay tuned. Uh, welcome back. So here we go. All the pre-match conferences are out of the way. The training's done. Players are being assessed. And this is the starting lineup for what is a pivotal game for the season. The only downside really from the squad is that Adam Thomas picked up an injury towards the end of the season. He's out for a number of months with a broken foot. I mean, and Mahan's going to have to play a role on the right-hand side. We have got Curran on the bench as cover, um, but obviously not the first team that we wanted for the playoffs. So starting lineup: up Renshaw and goals. The Wanderwaters at left-back. We've got Wilson and Flowers in the centre of defence with Chandler at right-back. We've got Graham Brown and Jones in the middle of the park who've been great all season. Mackay playing one of his final games on the left. Mahan on the right. And uh, the mighty Nick Knowles, domestic goddess up front. So we'll get into the game and see... If we could make any inroads into this Alfredton team and get ourselves into the playoff semi-finals, um, however we get on in the uh, in the playoffs, I'll, I'll cover all games in this episode. Um, whether we get all the way to the final, whether we get knocked out in the first round, if we get knocked out in this first game. All I'll do is I'll add the uh, end of season rewards and the summary to the uh, to the video. So hopefully it won't come to that, but if it does, you know what's happened. Anyone who skipped ahead. Um, there we go into the game. Got um, home on the uh, screen at the top. I, I, whenever we play a neutral ground or anything, I always get annoyed if we're playing away from home. But uh, yeah, five minutes into the game, it'll take a little while to sail. Two teams fairly evenly matched in terms of points and position in the league. Um, I would say on our day, full full strength, we'd give anyone a game. Uh, the form we've been on in terms of uh, not getting beat has been great. We're a bit hit and miss in terms of scoring lots of goals. Playing with one up front, you, you don't always get the amount of goals you would like. But again, we're fairly robust at the back, so we don't often take a paste in either. And we'll just see how this game pans out. See if we can get to half-time on, on an even keel. Maybe give ourselves a little bit of more encouragement as there's a chance for Alfreton just coming up halfway through the first half. And he's been blazed over, fortunately for us. Um, again, in terms of shots and shots on target, fairly even. We're dominating possession, which is the uh, signature of our game. Uh, I'm really excited for next season, even if we don't go up. We've got a new uh, new centre-back, new midfielder, new right-winger coming in already. Um, I think out of this current squad we've got, when I looked at the contracts, there's only four players currently signed on for next season, um, which doesn't leave us great strength in depth, and we'll have to do a lot of signings in the summer transfer window. Uh, Harry Flowers at centre-back, he's nominated for player of the season, uh, but he won't sign a new contract. 
so we're going to lose him for free as well which is a bit frustrating but that's just the way the cookie crumbles I guess when you're in the lower leagues and you're not um, full-time clubs and you don't have everyone tied down to full-time contracts so there we go uh, there's also been nothing on the job front I've not seen any mention of job opportunities there are a couple teams in league two that are currently vacant but we won't build up the stature or the reputation yet to go for any of them jobs so it looks like we'll definitely be doing another season at Curzon as we build up our reputation. See how we go. Graham with a corner in. Posh with a chance to recycle it in. Wilson on the edge of the box. Comes back out to Graham. In it goes to Mackay. And if that's a farewell goal from him, if that puts us into the semi-finals, then we will thank him for his service and see him on his way to Queen's Park up north of the border. But again, he's been quite good at scoring the odd goal. He's chipped in as necessary. It's not been all Knowles on him, on his own. Um, don't get me wrong, Knowles has scored his fair share as well. But then front three, our standard front three, have scored a lot of goals. Uh, I haven't tallied out, but it, yeah, I'm, you're probably thinking between 50 and 60 between the three of them, which is, is pretty good and probably what secured as a position in the playoffs in the first place. Just past the hour mark then, 1-0 up. Still dominating the possession. XG favourable in our advantage. And again, we've we've outshot them, just not so much on target. Next call is going to be pretty pivotal. If we get the next call, I think that's the game pretty much dead and buried. If they go on to get the next call, I think we might be in a little bit of bother, but we'll see. 20 minutes to go. We've had to make a defensive change. We don't have any more centre-halves on the bench, so it looks like Wilson's going to come off and Witham's going to come on. So we've got a midfielder playing at centre-back. Um, we're not going to take Jones off. We don't want to make our last change as of yet. As we go into the final 10 minutes, hopefully we can get us across the line, but Alfreton have got a chance down the right-hand wing as they work it towards the edge of the box. Flowers heads it clear initially, but they get it back in again. Roddy with a chance to deliver it, and unfortunately they've got themselves back on a level peg in. And this is what I was worried about, momentum's with them now. What I'll do is just shout a little bit of encouragement to try and chee the team back up a little bit. I'm going to get Mayhem off for the last five minutes and get Curran out there. And this is it. Ideally, we want to get a goal and avoid any kind of extra time or penalties because um, I've not done it in this season, but I don't want to yet either. Goal kick from Alpherton. It's flicked on, they've broke through the back four. Great save, keeps us in the game, but again, momentum swayed much in Alfreton's favour in the last five or ten minutes. So we go into the four minutes of injury time. I don't know if we'll be able to muster up one final final chance. I've got no shouts left as it stands. Into the final seconds of the game. It looks like it's going to come to an end, end of 90 minutes. So into the dressing room as we fire ourselves up ready for some extra time again as I said before the game two fairly evenly matched teams I think we finished just above them in terms of league position but throughout the season very closely matched there wasn't a huge amount of points in between us as Shalina takes the throwing down the right hand side Graham delivers into the box to Witham but again he can't get it on target if there's a goal in extra time, we look how tired some of them players are. Sonny Graham's in bits already. Um, Jack Mackay wants to be substituted. I don't think we can really afford to. See if we can nurse him just into half time of extra time. With him to Flowers to Jones. Curran down the right hand side who came on as a sub. Knowles out to Shalina. Chance to deliver it. Just need one sweet head on the edge of the box. Knowles. And he's put us back in the lead again, just coming up to half time in extra time. And that could give us a shout of getting into the next round. Flowers on the ball then. Could we have a chance of another opportunity just before the end of the first half? Knowles plays out wide to Curran. He breaks down the right hand side. Gets in the box again. Mackay. But he's just knocked it over. So Curran coming on's made a huge difference. Player ratings have gone through the roof. Get them into half time in extra time. And yeah, everybody is absolutely shattered, but again, we've just got to keep going. Look at the terms of shots and possession. We've absolutely dominated this game. It's going to be heartbreak if we don't go on to win it. 
Um, chance for Alverton, but it gets knocked out for a corner. Tense times, and we've been this many times last season when we started the wheels through the extra time games and the playoffs. And uh, yeah, we, we won the playoffs once, I think, when we were at Exeter. But every other time we tended to get knocked out either on penalties. Uh, Knowles wants to come off as well. Again, I don't think that's the position to take off if we do need to strengthen. We've only got one outfield substitute left on the bench. Don't really want to waste it for a centre forward because um, he's not really going to affect the play in terms of defensive uh, and holding out to maintain this 2-1 win. As we come into the final five minutes, um, they're certainly going to need a day off to recover for the next match. The last thing we really needed was extra time. Um, there's always the chance of injuries as well. We've got about eight players, nine players, just on the cusp of possibly missing the next match. Um, we've got a small squad as it is. We've only got 19 players in the squad, so we've not got a lot of strength and depth for rotation. As Alfreton come up in the last minute of normal time or extra time, Curran with a chance to break, sends it through to Knowles one-on-one -on -one with the keeper. He's gone wide back to Mackay and he's chipped it in for a, a fantastic end to the game and what we would have done for that to come many minutes earlier. So we've done the job. We've beat Alfreton. We progress to the next round. Um, it's job well done for all the boys. Would have been great to do it in normal time to save on fitness. But yeah, can't complain with that. Uh, what I'll do is I'll click us through and I will get us ready for the next match. So stay tuned and we'll see how we get on next. Uh, welcome back for the semi-final at Gateshead. Uh, for this match we've got Renshaw and goals. We've got Lawn Waters at left back. Wilson and Flowers in the centre of defence. Posher filling in at right back for Shalina. Got Graham Brown and Witham in the middle of the park. Mackay carries on on the left. Daly's coming on the right-hand side with Knowles continuing up front. Um, as you can see, there's some really tired players in there already. Um, I am tempted to take Harry Flowers out for Pruti, but again, I think we need our strongest players on the pitch to start uh, and just try and maybe grow into the game as it goes. In fact, I'm going to put Curran on for Daly just because Curran had a good impact in that last match, so we'll give him a run out now. Um, but yeah, lots of lots of shattered players. It, it's going to be tough. It, we're not expected to win anything. Kate said actually finished six points clear of us in the league. Um, but yeah, we'll give it a go. Uh, and again, as I said, if, if somehow we manage to pull it off and we get into the next, um, into the final, I will show you that match this episode as well, um, as unlikely as it is. Otherwise, um, that'll be the end of the episode. And it'll be the transfer special and season review in the next episode. So a lot to look forward to. Hopefully you've all enjoyed the journey so far. Certainly it's been one of the better seasons. It was a slow start. Um, we took us a while to settle into the formation. Took us a couple signings. Took us a while to get a feel of what the best squad was in terms of the minor tweaks to the tactics and the starting lineup. But again, I think overall, from what was expected of us, we've done phenomenally well. And regardless of what happens in this match, um, we can we can be safe in the knowledge we've had a great season. Knowles breaks through, and oh my word, as he took that past the last the last man there, I was certain he was going to score and slot it into the back of the net, but uh, not to be. Ten minutes into the game, then. Fairly evenly poised again. Um, they've probably got the edge on us in terms of player ability. Coming into form, uh, I don't know whether it's it's worth having that game in between or not. I think it's left us a lot more tired than they are, and we might see that as we come into the into the second half of the game when players get a little bit more sluggish and mistakes start to creep in. But we'll see that as it happens. Renshaw playing out from the back, and Wilson again. The signature of our game is that possession play. Brown's giving the ball away. I don't know if that's a sign of tiredness. Um, where is he? It might, could be, but it's, it's a bit early in the game. As Gateshead play their counter, Campbell chance to deliver it into the box. And again, we managed to get it away. So that's the that's the threat, really. Jack Mackay already looking in bits. Um, 25 minutes gone. Bit of a goal scramble, but we survive it. I think Mackay is probably not going to make it. Yeah, so Mackay off. Luke Daly on. The left-hand side. It's an unfamiliar role for him, but he's uh, he's right-footed, so I think he can cut in on that side, so he suits that inverted winger role. 
which might pay dividends for us as we move forward. Posh are not having a great game at right back. We have got Shalina to bring on at half time if necessary, which will be one of the changes I'll be looking at. As again, we play a long ball over the top to Knowles. But he's again, he's just put it narrowly over and it's that's the kind of chance. Fully fit, would he have got it? Maybe it's hard to say, but I'd like to have played them on an even keel. Um, if we were fully fit against, they're fully fit. Flowers is flagging as well. So we'll have to take him off as much as I don't want to because he's been our player of the season. Um, as we get five minutes up to half time. Sonny Graham for Merrill again. And, and that's it really. That's as fresh legged as we can be for that second half. All the substitutes made in the first half. Yeah, I feel it's a little bit unfair that we've had to play that extra game and we're playing this game in such a, a state of disrepair. But I suppose the flip side of that is Gateshead finished six points above us in a high place in the league and you could argue that they deserve the seeding and they deserve the extra rest between games. That's the advantage they've got through points. So, oh, one cleared off the line after it hit the bar there. So, again, looking really edgy. Just threw some words of encouragement out there because it's not quite going our way at the minute, but we just need to hold on. Even if we could take this to extra time or penalties, it'd be great to be in with a shout. But like I said before, and I'll reiterate from the start of the video, um, if we lose, it, we've still exceeded our expectations. We made it much higher than we should have done in the league. We've got players coming in to strengthen the squad for next season, so we should be able to make a real challenge for either playoffs or automatic promotion. And that's ultimately what we're looking to do. We're looking to change around the fortune of the club and rebuild a squad that's competitive at the top end. Um, it's come a little bit early in the first season. Um, then, then signings in the middle of the park has probably contributed to his doing that. But again, it's not something that we were ever going to do in one season. And plus, if we build reputation and get a job offer, it's similar to a promotion anyway. We just will have to relearn a different squad, different players, and almost start from the beginning at a separate club. But wherever the journey takes us, we're in it together, and we will see how we get on. Saw someone sliding in the box there, on nerves jangling. Last thing we want to do is give away a penalty. As they hit the post again, and the gates head have been so hard done by in this game. Um, they will be livid that they're not in front. Four shots on target to none as it currently stands. Um, 16 shots to six. We have managed to just eke the possession out, but in terms of dominating possession, we're not even doing like that. We would normally in a, a normal game. XG is low, we've not had any corners. Um, so, yeah, it's going to be a stretch to really get anything out of this game. Just need the final 15 minute push. Posh are getting a little bit upset at right back. Um, probably rightly so. He's playing out of position. We're demanding more from him. Uh, from his point of view, it would be frustrating. But from the team point of view, uh, this is our only chance to do it. So you either pull up your socks, dig deep and go for it. Or um, you just resign yourself to the fact you're going to be in the Conference North again for another season. As we approach the final six minutes of normal time, Throw in for Gateshead, all over the top. We managed to win it back. We're with them. Wilson and Waters. It's going to be hard for us to really fashion a chance from this. And again, that's a ball to nowhere. Gateshead get the ball back and counter a chance to deliver. And I, I think it'd be hard push to argue that they hadn't deserved that goal. We will go very attacking for what it's worth in the final three minutes. Um, but I think on the day. The better team is probably one. And we'll just look to build on this squad for next season. Again, it's been fantastic. Just a few minor tweaks, I think. And, and try and keep the bulk of the players on contracts if we can. Albeit the wage budget doesn't stretch as far as you would like it to in the conference. A lot of people will testify to that. But yeah. So there we go. End of the second game out of the semi-finals of the playoffs. Um, bit disappointing. But... Yeah, everyone gave it their all. So I can't really complain in terms of effort. But what I'll do is I'll click through and we'll just quickly go through the end of season reward uh, awards uh, to finish the episode. And that way, next episode, we can concentrate fully on the transfer rebuild in the first match of next season. So stay tuned. And here we go then. A quick whiz through the end of season review. 
those that were with us from the start it should be fa fairly familiar so new arrivals um, we didn't sign all these some were in it, always within the first season of football manager it captures all the players that were brought in before you got there um, but in terms of our signing Sonny Graham uh, picked up signing of the season Andre Jones again 6.97 average Zach Brown 6.93 so three fairly good signings, 7.19 from Sonny Graham, fantastic. Harry Flowers with a 7.44. They're probably going to get player of the season, not sure yet. I've not seen it come through. But in times of outgoings, we just got rid of some free contract players that weren't really impacting our team. In terms of results then in the league, uh, yeah, board expectation, top half. We blitzed that and got into the playoffs, which is fantastic. FA Cup, um, we got to the second round where we got beat by Bristol Rovers 1-0 and it was a very tight affair um, so that was good the only disappointment in terms of the Cups was the FA Trophy where we went out in the first round 4-0 at Darlington but that was before we really settled on a formation and a tactic uh, moments to remember then 4-0 battering a Kettering um, a 2-1 win over Spennymore um, goal of the season came from Knowles in a 3-1 defeat to Wild it's not really a nice way to remember your best goal is in a defeat but there you go um, reputation not changed over the last season. Annual revenue has gone up and merchandise um, seems okay. So in terms of how we lined up, this looked pretty familiar. Renshaw, what was Wilson Flowers, Shalliner, Graham Witham and Jones. Um, I'm not quite sure if that should be Zach Brown in there, but again, you could argue that throughout the course of a season. Zach Brown only came in after December. Uh, Mackay, Thomas and Dawes up front and how, what I would have given to have Thomas in for them playoff games as well because as you can see there, I mean he was leading in terms of our assists outside of Chalonet, 11 goals and I could say there, that's what 50 goals between the front three, so again it played a, a lot into how we performed that season. In terms of accolades we got one manager of the month award in February um Harry Flowers, player of the season. Young player, Matty Waters, signing Sonny Graham, which we'd seen. Goal of the season, Dominic Knowles, we'd just seen. Top scorer, Knowles again. Matty Nick Knowles, 21 goals. Most assists from Shallon at right back. Matty Waters, most player of the match awards, which is quite surprising. Highest average rating, Flowers, and most comp passes completed per 90 minutes, Harry Flowers. So it's going to be a shame to see him go, but I just can't get him to sign a new contract. As you can see, we've broken lots of records this season. So most goals in a season, most goals by a player in a match with a hat trick, players in a, most goals for players in a league match, three goals again, most assists in a season, Shalana, most clean sheets. Um, it surprised me with Renshaw because he wasn't um, the most fantastic, but he's, he's been brilliant. Uh, Matty Waters, most man of the match awards in a season. Worst discipline, Andre Jones. Well done. Uh, youngest player uh, is Sonny Graham. And all this player, Craig Hobson, uh, who's now gone. Um, fastest goal, Nick Knowles, 1 minute, 32 seconds. Youngest goal scorer, Sonny Graham. And all this scorer, Andre Jones. So, yeah, lots of records broke there, which is good to see. Um, so, yeah, it's looking exciting for the next season. Vision for the next season is uh, mid-table. We have got a new contract to keep us here for another year. Uh, possession football, most of the set pieces and high pressing tempo so yeah, all looking pretty good, so with that being said I'll end the episode there look forward to the transfer special coming over the weekend where we look to rebuild on on what we've got and the players coming in see if we can strengthen our position for next season, I think we can but stay tuned to find out if we do and I'll see you soon